All right, we're back working on our compiler. And the first thing we're going to do is take a look at this function here. We, we wrote the, inter the tokenizer, sorry, and now we're going to work on the parser. And if, but before we do that, I, I want to change things up a little bit. So we have this interpret function, which uh, what it does is it takes some source string at source and it compiles it and then runs it in the VM. So to do that, it calls this compile function. And if we go look at that over here, it tokenizes it. So that's what we did now. Then it calls this compile to bytecode and it does a couple of things. So what I would like this um, function to do is actually use this procedure that we called make chunk. And the problem, I guess, is that this is actually making a pointer. So maybe we make this one a pointer as well. And then what it should do is um, chunk should be it's in VM, so we make a chunk. We won't call it with any of that. That already initializes the code. The line, apparently not the line numbers. So it should definitely do that. And then we have to assign that. And we return it. So now all of this stuff is handled there. And this should still be fine. This is obviously just some some dummy code. Um, really, like here is where the parser will come in. Uh, but then it's returned here. And what I want to do is this is going to be also a pointer. And it's going to instead return a boolean, which uh, tells us whether uh, we succeeded in compiling. And for now, it will always return true. Then if we go into main, which is the one that's calling it, we'll say if hmm. Right, so actually let's go back here. So this is the chunk that we want to put the compiled code into. So we'll do this. It won't return it. This one won't do this guy. The init thing should happen here instead. And we'll say, if we don't succeed in compiling it, we will raise an error. Otherwise, we'll, we'll give it to the VM to run. And then we can say defer VM delete chunk. And I think that should run. Let's just try. Okay, it doesn't run. Uh, because if we go to this thing. Ah, right. So we have to remember to pass it here. We may add return value later, but for now we don't do it like that. And write another thing is it's already a pointer. We don't need that. And it's complaining in site tokenize, which is weird. What is it complaining about? So compiler main, no return values expected. 
Ah, it's this guy, I guess. And very confused. Okay, so it's just something in tokenized now here. Uh, some stuff left over, I think. Ah, no. Okay, so I think we got it back to working order. And what is the rebel actually doing? It's just He's calling interpret, which is now doing all this stuff. And it's trying to compile things, which is, if we go over here and look, it's calling the tokenizer. And for whatever reason, tokenizer right now outputs a lot of stuff, which it probably shouldn't. But it was nice for debugging. I'm gonna just comment it out right now. Uh, this stuff is not needed. So now if I do this, There's still this uh, gut thing, which I, I don't remember. It's here. Let's remove that. And there's also returning here somewhere. Returning here. This one we can get rid of. Perfect. Yeah. So it says three, but actually it will say that no matter what, because it is just a leftover from this, this dummy code that we put in here, where it's Just putting in one constant and then the return operation. All right. So what we'll do now is actually to kind of scrap this function. And uh, the reason is that this tokenized function, actually what I will do is kind of put this stuff back because the, the point of this function is really just for debugging. Uh, so keep that here and then what we'll do is write not a compiler that tokenizes then passes and then generates code but one that kind of does it in one go so what I mean is that we will do something like um, let me see so we still have this global tokenizer. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna initialize it with the source code. Then we're gonna advance and we'll, we'll look at that later. Then we're gonna consume, then we're gonna make an expression, pass an expression, and then we're actually gonna do this that, that uh, GitHub uh, Copilot suggests, which is at the very end, we will look for uh, end of file token. If we don't get one, we'll return false and 
and otherwise will return true to say that if we don't see an end of file token for some reason then it means the compilation failed otherwise it was successful and we can make this uh, like can have this this kind of thing I'm gonna disable copilot it's a bit distracting all right so first up we are gonna need a parser to hold the previous token, current token, uh, and that's it. Then we're gonna use the same stylus over here, and we're gonna have like a global kind of parser, a global parser instance, and then we'll let's write this advanced procedure. So the first thing is it will store where we're currently at. Uh, then there'll be a kind of a loop. And we will say that the current one is the one we get by scanning a token. And then if that one is not a well, let's see what is the okay, type. It's not equal to error. Let me see if that's, uh, yeah, it's just dot error. And we're actually done here. Otherwise we'll say uh, error at current. And we'll say, uh, parser at current dot, Well, we'll say line number for now. Or rather, let's do something like this, and then error current will be message, and we'll just we'll just like print line. We'll say error at line this uh, da, da, da. something like that and then we'll look at the current tokens line and we'll put the message it's not super interesting this stuff so maybe I will just really get this into a nice state uh, later on let's just try to run it and right because we have a lot of stuff that's still undefined so that won't work okay so i have made the error handling work as follows basically we call this error at some token with a message and it will print some information which is not really so interesting then it will say that the parser had an error, which will need to report that compilation failed. And then it will also set panic mode on the parser so that any subsequent errors are just ignored, as you can see here. Uh, and that's basically it. So we have these two extra fields in the parser and uh, those are, every time we try to compile something, they are reset. So we have a like, part way of this function now let's write this function consume which uh, should take a token type and a message and I guess we need to say if the current type does not equal this type then we will say uh, error at current and the message is the message and I think that's it although of course if we do match then we actually have to consume this token so let's call advance which is we'll, we'll consume the token 
I think we'll take a break here. Um, but we are kind of on the way to to almost having compiled bytecode. So I'll see you in the next one.